the corner. All right, so anytime we bring the boundary, well, like we talked about before when we're teaching this to our kids, the drops underneath are the same. The biggest thing is we have to replace the pressure guy with the first open DB. So right here, we're over the top with the boundary corner. He's playing the deep third. Will's got to push curl flat, Mike Strong, Mike's weak hook, and this dropping strong hook. We want to keep that drop consistent, all right? The only issue with this is depending on who you play it, play into the boundary, because a lot of times uh, your field end may be bigger or you putting a guy in space that's not used to playing in that much space. All right, so in this particular uh, boundary pressure, all right, try to keep this guy as close as we can to the court. All right, here's an example right here. Coming from the boundary. And we want to get this, this hook defender right here because we got the end dropping. He needs to be pushing more over here to this hash because we got a curl flat player. So that's kind of sometimes the difference for these guys is understanding where the pressure is coming from and where their landmark may be different, all right, when you add, some, add another guy in there. All right, two by two, same thing. If it's a single X and it's not two open receivers into the boundary, we're still going to bring the corner. So anytime that we get that, that ace formation or a single X, Without two detached, we're still going to bring it from the boundary. All right, here's an example here. And so got it dumped underneath. The other thing I want to hit real quick, all right, is you can structure these however you want to. And we talked about the front earlier, and we play them out of multiple fronts. All right, but a lot of times, you know, depending on who your three technique is, if you're a four down front, all right, who, depending on who your three technique is, he's got to get to a, be a contained player, right? So it's typically easier to get that three technique closer to where he's got to contain, all right? Sometimes we do it the other way, all right? But it's going to depend on who's in the game for us. Like for us right now, all right, we have a couple guy, uh, three techniques that either have a really good length or they're really athletic, so they could do it out of a two-eye, all right? But typically, we like to put those guys in the three technique just so it's closer to where they got to go contain to, especially if you're playing, if you got a tackle with some length that he's got to try to get to.